Jeff Bezos is in the news. I mean, he's in the news all the time. And I don't know how you pronounce that, by the way. Bezos, Bezos, it doesn't really matter. The guy who's beyond rich, he's obnoxiously rich. Homeboy has like $200 billion. You can't even spend $1 billion in a lifetime. He's got $200 billion. So anyway, um, this idiot decided to buy the world's most mega yacht ever. So take a look at this. This is in CNN Business. The world's richest man is reportedly buying a boat, though that word feels inappropriately sensible for the monstrosity going to, cap going to Captain Bezos. A 417-foot super yacht that's so massive it has its own support yacht with a helipad, according to Bloomberg. The estimated cost, not including the boat's support boat, is $500 million. The luxury... Yacht's Dutch manufacturer, o Oceanco, uh, hasn't released many details about the vessel called Project 721. It even sounds like a Bond villain thing. The company didn't immediately respond to requests for comment. Half a billion bucks is an inconceivable amount of money for most people, but it's a small fraction of the $75 billion that Bezos gained in 2020 alone. His total net worth stands just shy of $200 billion, according to Bloomberg. Amazon stock, the primary source of Bezos' fortune, rose a staggering 75% last year as the pandemic upended consumer behavior in the company's favor, and Wall Street, flush with easy cash thanks to the Federal Reserve, piled into tech stocks. Bezos wasn't alone. U.S. billionaires collectively gained $1.1 trillion in 2020, making them nearly 40% richer than before the pandemic hit. Homeboys getting a yacht that's so big... It has a yacht. A yacht has a yacht. So, I don't know. 417 feet. That didn't really land in my head. But I converted it to yards and then it did land. It's like a, it's just shy of like 140 yards. So, it's almost a football field and a half. That's how big this yacht is. And we're going to get more details that come out about it eventually. And it is going to be sickening. It's going to be sickening. Listen, you know, I don't know when it was that this idea that there should be no cap on extreme wealth, I don't know when it was that that idea rose to prominence. But at this point, I think it's a fundamentally absurd idea. This guy owns a company. That company was under fire recently because the drivers can't even get bathroom breaks. They need to piss and shit in their trucks as they make their frantic deliveries. He needed to be shamed into raising his minimum wage to $15 an hour. And it was only after he was shamed by Bernie Sanders and Ro Khanna with the Stop Bezos Act that he finally, okay, okay, okay I can pay $50 an hour. They did everything they could, legal and illegal, to crush the attempt to unionize in Bessemer, Alabama, and they succeeded in doing that. They succeeded in crushing the unionization effort in Bessemer, Alabama. You tell me, when you're looking at this fact, half a billion dollar yacht with its own yacht, and it's five, $500 million, he's worth $200 billion. You tell me, looking at this, that the default shouldn't be unionization. That we shouldn't have a Scandinavian model where everybody's part of a union by default and you can opt out if you want, but you start as part of the union. You tell me why it shouldn't be like that. You tell me why we shouldn't have top marginal tax rates that are at least like they were during the golden age of economic expansion in this country. The top marginal tax rate under Eisenhower was about 90%. Under JFK was about 70%. Now, to be clear, the effective rate was not that. That's just the nominal rate, which is what it is on paper. The effective rate was a lot closer to 43% or 45%. But that's a lot better than what we have now. That's a lot better. So why shouldn't you raise taxes on the wealthy? And why shouldn't you take that money and put it into social services for everybody? Listen, if you have capitalism or if you have a corporatist system, you're going to have extreme wealth and income inequality. And income inequality. The only way to make this system even somewhat palatable, and that's debatable how palatable, palatable it'll be, but the only way to do it is to do massive redistribution of wealth. You have to give everybody a free education, including college. You have to give everybody free health care. You have to give everybody 
paid vacation time by law. You have to give everybody higher wages. You can't have a, a system that's so volatile and fragile and exploitative that we have 500,000 homeless people. Over 30% of people can't even make their rent payment. A lot of that has to do with the pandemic. 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. 80% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. And this one fucker has nearly $200 billion. In what world does that make sense? Half of working people in this country make $30,000 a year or less. In what world does this make sense? Tell me why we shouldn't redistribute massively. Tell me why we shouldn't do that. This is unsustainable. It is completely unsustainable. You are playing with fucking fire if you don't raise taxes on these people. Raise the corporate tax rate, raise the top marginal tax rate, and listen, I'm I'm open to the conversation, dog. Why shouldn't you have basically a cap on net worth at $1 billion? Why shouldn't you have that? Extreme wealth by its very nature corrupts democracy because then those people are so powerful they can basically buy the government. They effectively buy the government. That's what all the lobbyists are for. That's what the special interests do. That's why you have the military industrial complex and Wall Street and assholes like this. They effectively own the government because that's what happens with extreme wealth. You get so much power. You accumulate so much power. Tell me why we shouldn't cap everything at a billion dollars. You can be worth a billion dollars and no more. That's it. And the rest of it, you're damn right we tax it. You're damn right we redistribute it. And don't give me this bullshit like you're some sort of victim when you have a billion dollars. A billion dollars. Oh, will you not be able to afford the $500 million yacht if you only have a billion dollars in net worth? I'm sorry. You're going to have to downgrade to like a $250 million yacht, you fucking prick. Fuck out of here. Raise that marginal tax rate on the rich. Raise the corporate tax rate. Like I said, this stuff is genuinely unsustainable. And just so everybody understands, a new report came out. This was after the Trump tax cuts in 2017. For the first time ever, billionaires were paying a f an effectively lower tax rate than somebody who's in the middle class. Because of all the tax cuts they have in that Trump tax cut bill and all the loopholes and deductions and all that, the effective tax rate that a billionaire was paying was less than your average American. And I haven't even brought up the study that came out from uh, the Rand Corporation, which found that from the mid-1970s until today, the top fraction of the top 1% has effectively stolen $47 trillion from the bottom 90%. It's not Kyle Kalinske speaking, that's the Rand Corporation. In other words, if you had the same pay ratio in the economy today that you had in the early 1970s, the bottom 90% would be $47 trillion richer. That means every American in the bottom 90% would get $1,144 more per month for the rest of their lives if you just kept the pay ratio the same. That's how broken the system is. Careful, Jeffy. The pitchforks might come out soon.